Hello, hello, and welcome once again to another edition of a Beatles program, a podcast that we call Things We Said Today. This is the show that centers mainly on what's going on in the world, Beatle news-wise. I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show. You know me best for my syndicated radio program called Every Little Thing. And I'm being joined by my co-host, Mr. Beatles Examiner, and Paul McCartney Examiner, and George Harrison Examiner, and Ringo Starr Examiner, and about 10 other Examiner columns himself, Steve Marinucci. Hi, Ken. Hi, everybody. And uh, just to let everyone know how important this show is to Steve, it's actually his birthday right now as we speak, and rather than going out and, and frolicking and having a lot of fun and partying, he'd rather be doing this with me. That's right. It, 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 I won't even, we won't even talk about what time it is. <laughs> And you're three hours earlier than me, so... That's right. That's right. Well, today's program is about something that just leaked out a few days ago, news-wise. And uh, this was a big shock to me. It's something called The Beatles Live Project. And a press release came out, and we'll talk about what it says in the press release, and we'll get our own take of what we think about this upcoming Beatles project. But uh, why don't you tell the folks what this is basically about, Steve, and, and we'll go a little bit deeper and, and uh, reveal what it says in the press release. Well, what they did was they announced um, two days ago that together with a co company in Toronto, they're putting together what they're calling right now the Beatles Live Project. I'm sure that, you know, that name is not going to stay, but it's authorized by Apple. And what they're going to do is they're going to put together a film on the Beatles concert performances from October 63, when, which they're saying, uh, they're, they're using that mark because it was when Beatlemania was first coined. Uh, coined. And they're going through October 60, uh, I'm sorry, August 66, the end of August, when the Beatles played Candlestick Park in San Francisco. And so they're looking for unreleased footage from fans from uh, you know they're looking for stories from fans they're looking for contribu they're they're trying to make this a fan made thing um to get the fans uh, uh memories uh in this it's kind of an anthology for fans if if you want to call it that it, it's an interesting idea um there's been some suggestions that they might put out some of the concert recordings uh, and this may or may not be the project that Giles Martin was thinking about uh, when he said he was working on a Beatles project a few months ago. There is also the possibility that uh, they may put out, uh, who, who knows what they're going to do with all this stuff, what the end, end result of this is going to be besides the film, whether it's going to be a DVD or a feature film, they don't know because I asked the spokesman for the project a couple of days ago to give me that information and she didn't know. So it's it's still kind of a, a new thing. They're asking for contributions through the end of this December for like a month. So, That's really fast. Yeah. For, for the moment they announced was, this. It, when I, when yeah. I saw that on the press release, uh, I thought that was a misprint because I figured they were going to ask for stuff through next year. But that's not the case. Initially, they want, only, they want to get the stuff by the end of December. And... Uh, the spokesman told me that they're going to evaluate what they get at that point and see where they're going to go from there. And I suspect that's probably just a, just to see whether this is worth doing or not. And, but I, I don't think that's going to be an issue. I think they're going to get a lot of contributions, and they're going to get a lot of, you know, the stories I don't think are going to be a problem. It's the I think the the footage is going to be what they're l really looking at. And it'll be interesting to see how they deal with, what they get. Um, I know one person already voiced to me on Facebook that they weren't going to contribute what they had because they were afraid they weren't going to get paid for it. Mm. And I don't think that's going to be an issue here. Um, I think the the way they've worded all the mentions of contributions, it sounds to me like there is going to be some kind of, there's going to be something that people are going to get. I assume it's going to be more than just a credit. Uh, and you know, some well, people are happy with just that. <laughs> true. Some people would be happy with that with a Beatles project. Hmm. Uh, but I think other people would not. And But we don't know what, what's going to happen. And they also are 
really, which is really interesting, they are not being real grabby about the, I mean, there's a ton of, there's a ton of stuff on YouTube. Everybody knows this that isn't released. There's a lot of rare footage. I think there's one of Kansas City. There's some, there's some interesting stuff on YouTube. And something leaked out not long ago from Minneapolis, if I right. recall. You know, uh, it, the question is what you know where everything is going. What's going to happen, and that's going to be, it's going to be interesting from, you know, to see where where everything goes. Now, why don't we just read what it says in the press release? Because I have to say, I'm a I'm a little bit confused here of what this project really is going to be. I don't know if I necessarily agree with what you had just said, Steve, about this being more of a, a fan based film. But anyway, let me just read what it says. Uh, the film will dig deep into the world's TV and radio archives and fans' basements and attics. And the press release also says the hunt is on for never-before-seen media from this time period. This project has commissioned global research teams and developed social media tools to collaborate with the public, concert goers, and students in every location where the Beatles performed. But it also says this production company, this is from Toronto? Yeah. OVOW. Well, the, the, that means uh, that stands for One Voice, One World. It comes from the All You Need Is Love broadcast. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Very good. It says that this production company, they have assembled a global team of archivists, collectors, information specialists, artists, social media strategists, amateur media groups, Beatle fan clubs, writers, academics, and film restoration experts to support activities in the field. So it sounds like they probably have done a lot of work already before even asking for uh, or soliciting material from the fans. It's possible, and they've also, remember, they've also got a lot of footage, you know, that they've had, you know, counting what was on, it was in the anthology, counting what wasn't in the anthology. I mean, they've got, they've got a, a, a stockpile plus whatever Apple can offer them. Right. So it's going to be, it, it, it'll be interesting to see what they, what they finally come up with and how they, how they use it. And it sounds to me like, the more we're talking about this, it sounds like to me the project is really kind of at the, at the first level, and they really don't know where they're going to take it yet. Mm. And we have no idea when this will be coming out. And we have no idea. Yeah, that's the other thing. There's no clue as to when, it, when it'll come out. But as far as, you just don't know how much this will be fan-involved. I mean, I'm sure there'll be a lot of stuff submitted by fans that will be used, but a lot of the decision-making could have been made already, as far as things that will definitely be in there. Well, they've already got, they've already got a page on, their, on the website, which is called BeatlesLiveProject.com. And in two days, and I just noticed this this morning, they've piled up, there's a bunch of stories there. And people have... have Come, I have added stories about seeing the Beatles live in concert. I mean, I'm just clicking through here, and it, it's not stopping. They've got a lot of stories already. Mm -hmm. And God only knows how many they're going to have by the time this is over with. Right. They're going to have, a, they're going to have an incredible amount of, of submissions. It's going, to be, it's going to be pretty crazy. And it's probably going to be very difficult to whittle that down to the few that they're going to use in the film. Well, that's why... You know the the thing about when it's going to come out is kind of interesting because they're going to have a lot of stuff to go through, mm. and how long it's going to take them to go through this is, is going to, is is a big question. It depends on how many people they've got, you know, dealing with this stuff, and of course, everything's going to have to have the final approval of you know of the Beetle Trust, of, right? You know, of uh, Paul Ringo, you know, Olivia and Yoko. So mm -hmm. it's going to be it's. It's going to be very interesting to see how this ends up. Right. So it actually says here, and I, I do like this statement in the press release, the goal is to combine footage, images, music, interviews, and stories in a definitive, emotional, and visceral film about Beatlemania. Mm-hmm. So what do you think of the whole idea behind this? Are you excited about it? I'm excited uh, from the perspective that it's a fan, it's a fan thing. We won't get the standard story. We won't get the, you know, I mean, it'll be a, an approved story, obviously, when it comes out. But, I mean, it'll be from a point of view that uh, uh, that the Beatles usually don't use. You know, they usually go through their eyes, not through other people's eyes. Mm. And I would love to know who, 
how this how this idea came through, how how it developed, and that's I think a that's a good question. Uh, you know, I recall seeing certain things on the internet with people asking, "Do you have any Beatles stories for when you saw them in the '60s?" And I'm wondering if there were rumblings around that time. Maybe that's what led to this. You know, I've heard in the past that the the Beatles kind of pay attention to what's being said, so that you know, message boards and things like that are kind of watched. So they're aware of things that, that go on. I've heard I've heard this before. They're they're in tune. So somebody out there is was paying attention and, and you know, may have picked up on this kind of idea. I've seen people do these kind of stories of of Beatlemania things before. Um, and, you know, it's always fun. There's, but there's been books about the Beatles going live and stuff like that right. before. Um, so, yeah, this is this is um, this is going to be very interesting, especially the way it ends up. It's interesting. So that you they actually use... think that this is more a fan's perspective, and you won't really get interviews about the Beatles themselves, either from that time period or later on, talking about the tours. And I don't think you can eliminate that. I think that's going to have to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. It's going to have more direct. It'll have some definite direction, a more a, a more precise direction. I think is probably the better term. If it has um, Beatle observations, so I mean, I would look definitely for comments from Paul, from Ringo, and tape comments from George and and John. I, I don't think you can you can get away from that. Right. But I mean, there's so little is known, and really, it'd be silly for us to for me to speculate what they're going to do because we really don't know what they're going to do hmm. i mean this whole thing has kind of popped up out of nowhere there was a suggestion that this is giles martin's beetle project that he was talking about a few months ago there have been suggestions that this will be a, a good reason for them to start releasing things like hollywood bowl on cd and some of the other live concerts they have i mean we know they have tokyo we know there is the that audio tape from Kensick Park, you know, which has been bootlegged extensively and which is kind of which is pretty listenable. It's not bad. Right. And there's a lot of other concerts that are that are that are floating around that aren't bad and probably some that are that will probably get involved <laughs> that mm. will that will be in, in used in this project. So it'll be it, I mean, I think what will really be interesting is what turns up that nobody has heard before. Right. That's going to be what's really going to be fun. And we don't know what that will be. I mean, there was a a Toronto concert that was bootlegged, I believe it was Toronto, or Minneapolis or something. There was some concert that was bootlegged last year, or, uh, I'm sorry, auctioned last year or the year before that had all the all the uh, groups on it and stuff that was recorded. It was an audience recording. Uh, I think that's what's, that's going to be interesting, what, what turns up there. Okay. And we don't know what's going to turn, you know, there's no way to know what's going to turn up there, but that's going to be one of the real benefits of this thing to see what turns up. And as you know, as years go on, you know this kind of thing becomes more valuable, and it'll be you know, and it's time for this to be done. So yeah, it's long overdue. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like the idea for doing this uh, in part because there's just been so little that has ever come out officially on the Beatles as a live band. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you were just saying the Hollywood Bowl concert, which came out on vinyl back in the 70s. That's never been re-released on CD. There's uh, the cuts on the anthology CDs. There's the the um, the footage on the anthology video. Mm-hmm. And there have been, of course, the unauthorized videos of, say, uh, Washington Coliseum or Shea Stadium. But as far as what's been released by the Beatles themselves, there's like this this gaping hole in that area of live performances. There's so much historically that's important that I feel really should come out. And that, there is um, also, uh, uh, there was some, there was footage shot of the Hollywood Bowl 64 concert. It is absolutely tremendous. Mm. It, it was done in-house, and it's a beautiful film. I mean, anybody that's seen it know, will know what I'm talking about. Right. And bootleggers have synchronized the sound to the video, and it's be- it's absolutely beautiful, mm. and um, I'm sure that would probably be a part of this too. We'll see what we'll see what happens. Uh, there's so there. I mean, everybody can probably think of something that 
that is out there. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm excited just for the fact that there's going to be stuff in there that I've never seen before. But I also, I don't know, it's just the way my brain works. I tend to look at things from a business angle. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a great idea because it can attract both the hardcore fan and a casual fan. Because the hardcore fan could see material they've never seen before. And for the casual fan, they're just learning about the Beatles as a live band. Right. And since, like I said, there's been very little ever that's been released by the Beatles live, it can attract both audiences. And it, that's not a, an easy thing to do. One thing that does concern me is the emphasis on the mania aspect. Mm -hmm. Now, there's no doubt that the mania side is important to bring up, certainly from a historical point of view, but I do hope that there's some attention given to the fact that the Beatles really were a good performing band, despite I, all the trappings of the mania. Yeah, I, I, th I don't think the mania is going to be, even though it says, and I'm looking at the press release, it says, um, in a definitive and emotional visceral feature, feature film about Beatlemania, I don't think you can showcase the live concerts and just concentrate on Beatlemania as much as as much as Beatlemania was a part to all that to make it really worthwhile. Mm. I think if they if they go off on that just on Beatlemania itself and screaming and yelling and and some of the craziness like that, they'll be hurting themselves. We would I should say we would really want them to concentrate a lot on the uh, you know on the music. And the music was where you know was even though the Beatles performed not under the greatest conditions at times, you know, with all the craziness and you know equipment and stuff like that, hmm. which the technical the the equipment wasn't up to what it is now. And the even, sound even systems, the, the sound systems, right. were primitive back then. Right. Yeah, even even I mean, and it was funny actually how things changed in just a sh few short years. I mean, I saw the Who in the early '70s and. My ears were ringing for days after that, and I don't think the Beatles ever did that. Uh, well, you you couldn't hear them, right? Right. The, you know, and it's an important aspect to bring up. It's fascinating that they that they played as well as they did when they couldn't hear themselves. Right. So I hope that they drive that point home, and I hope that you do hear a lot of the music and how well they really sounded, despite the fact that there was all this screaming around them. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was thunderous around right. them. What what they were listening to. And uh, you listen to the bootlegs, and they sounded pretty darn good yeah, as a live Holly act. That Hollywood Bowl concert, again, is one of my favorites. And um, the the atmosphere and the, the sound on that show is just absolutely fantastic. Hmm. And, um, I hope I would think that that will probably be included. I mean, that would seem to be one of the definitive shows. But that's, yeah, uh, it, I mean, that's a great example of, you know, what we're talking about there. Yeah. Well, one thing I hope doesn't happen is that this this coming out um, is not a substitute for not putting out Shea Stadium <laughs> or the Hollywood Bowl or the Washington Coliseum show. Those I'm, I'm more a fan these days of just straightforward concerts, just seeing the concert from start to finish. I, I like documentaries a lot, don't get me wrong especially if they're done well. But I'd much rather see the Shea Stadium concert be released. Although this, you know, if this is really done right, this could really wow me. So I know there's so many fans out there that have been saying for the longest time, when is Shea Stadium going to come out? When is Let It Be going to come out? For those fans, they may say, why are you putting this out first? Well, we don't know what they're going to do in the, in the meantime. That's, who knows? I mean, the, the rumor is that next year is going to be Next year is going to be the Let It Be DVD that's been going on. That's been going around for some time now. I certainly hope that's true. I hope so too. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what surprises they they come up with. Well, we already know that next year is going to be the mono box, the mono vinyl box. Mm -hmm. But uh, what else they're going to do beyond that? Um, who knows? Well, they who knows? certainly have a lot of uh, <laughs> material out there to pick from, and a lot of worthwhile. Uh, whether it's CDs or DVDs that could come out. Yep. You're dealing with, uh, in the eyes of many people, not only the greatest band that ever lived, but the most fascinating band. So to that point, there's so much stuff that still could come out. And I hope that what Apple does is put out 
one thing every year. And, yeah, uh, I hope so too. Let me say one thing. Um, if you have a story to contribute to uh, the Beatles Live Project, um, you should get to the website, thebeatlesliveproject.com, and there's a place to contribute stories, and it, they also give you instructions on how to contribute other things, video, audio, etc. And so if you want to be a part of that, uh, don't, uh, you know, uh, don't wait too long because you don't have very long to wait, at least for the first round. Mm-hmm. And uh, so if you want to be involved in that, uh, yeah, it's a good idea to get involved right away. Okay. So this is something that we have to look forward to in the hopefully near future. Hopefully. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll find out soon enough, I would think. Right. And we also should say that we have a contest going on right now in which you can win the brand new Beatles Scrabble game. And the way to do that, why don't you tell them, Steve? The way to do that is very easy. Just send us an email to things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. Just give, send us your email. email. Uh, you don't have to answer any questions. We're making it real easy for you. And we're gonna, the deadline is the end of November. Um, and please don't flood us with emails. Let's keep it to one, one per, but we'd love to have you win it. So if you're interested... And you like the show, or if you like just like the show and just want to tell us what you think of the show, um, you can send us a comment there too. But if you'd like to win a copy of uh, the new Beatles Scrabble game, that's where to do it. Okay, and also for those of you that don't know, we have our own Facebook page just under the title of Things We Said Today, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I have my own website, which is KenMichaelsRadio.com, which you can check out for interviews and Beatles trivia that's posted every week, and I give away. Great prizes as well, just like the Beatles Scrabble game. And um, all you got to do is go to the website and check it out. It's uh, KenMichaelsRadio.com. And I'm on uh, Examiner.com under my name. Look me up, Steve Marinucci. I'm also on Facebook under my own name. And um, feel free to come by and say hello and comment and and uh, say nice things to me and... and uh, Say uh, I usually comment uh, to everybody that uh, sends me a note on on uh, Facebook. So right, and I have my own Facebook page too. We both like nice things being said to us. So we do. Just we butter us up do. in the very beginning, and we'll definitely friend you. Yep. So uh, for this edition of things we said today, I'm Ken Michaels, being joined by Steve Marinucci, and we just want to say thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. See you next time.